Hi, I'm Matt Schultz. I'm a multimedia artist and a college professor of art and design. I posted another tutorial to help people understand how they could get their mid-journey low-res images to print, and the response was outrageous. It was phenomenal. Thank you, everybody, for that. Uh, I got a lot of private messages, too, of people asking uh, 100 Ways to Sunday on how to do this or how to do that. And it seems that one of the general, more popular requests is how to correct the symmetry of eyes or like, you know, um, fix one eye or the other mid journey. We're on four, but previous to that really did have some problems doing the eyes equally, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, just as mid journey has a terrible problem trying to understand fingers, which is weird because it seems like there would be a code that you would say, if you have a, an appendage, it should end with no more or less than five units. Right. So whatever. I find it amazing that I can put in um, elfin uh, warrior woman with filigreed armor and it comes up with this image, but it still can't understand five. Right. So um, I'm putting this tutorial together to show you how to correct the eyes. Right. That's when I start here. And um, I later will do something where we can deal with the hands. Uh, hopefully by the time I have to do that tutorial, they'll have fixed it. <laughs> right. So here we go. Remember, we uh, create our image uh, in uh, mid journey, right? And if we go to image size and look at this, it's again, remember these, squ these little squares were 14 by 14 by 72, another crappy low res image, right? And then if I zoom in on this, right, I'm at 200, 300, 400% now. You can tell by the navigator window here or at the bottom of the master window, it says 400%. I'm starting to see all the uh, pixels, right? So it's very aliased. Uh, and uh, the problem I have is just that the eyes aren't symmetrical, right? So the catch light in this one's wrong and like the eyelids bent. And then this one has this dim like dip at the bottom, which isn't aesthetically that pleasing, right? So if I want to correct this, I would not do it from this image. So what I would do is, is I would go to Gigapixel and we would put our image in there. As I showed you guys previously, we would let this render, right? And then we could make a decision. And don't forget when we save this, we would want to save it as a TIFF, which I already did to expedite the workflow here. Here's the TIFF for that project. So I'm gonna open it up in Photoshop. There it is. And again, the it you know, because we're just looking at the preview window, now we're at 25%, right? So if I go look at the image size here, this is actually 20 inches by 20 and it's 300 dpi so this is a high res image look how crystal clear this is fantastic right so the irony was is i thought the dip was bad and i liked her right eye and now when i look at her right eye it the catch light which it's like trying to emulate is kind of up on this lid and it just doesn't look good right so in a weird way i'm kind of more thinking i might duplicate the left eye but i'll tell you what as an exercise so you guys can learn this we'll do both techniques okay one of the first things that i do Command plus zoom in, command minus is zoom out. One of the first things I do is I duplicate the base layer. Now you can unlock it by double clicking it, right? And that becomes an editable layer. But what I wanna make sure is I have a backup. So I command Z, I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna duplicate the base layer. And then this is my own made up like protocol, right? And what this does is it keeps me one step ahead in the fact that if I now use the clone stamp tool, which will permanently change the pixels in this layer, if I mess it up later, I can just throw the layer away and duplicate it again, as opposed to like starting the project over. Again, we have a history uh, layer where you can go back, you know, in your histories. But once I save this and then I close out and reopen it, I lose that history. And what I want to do is to be able to just always step one step back. Ideally, it's when you're dealing with a client, right? You're showing them something like, oh, I don't like that thing. And you maybe did like it. You don't want it to be permanent. You want to just step back one thing, you know, one layer and then change it as fast as possible. All these little shortcuts that I use and like kind of protocol things add up to like so many seconds that at the end of the year, I get like a, a, a huge vacation, right? So here we go. We're going to zoom in on her eye and using the clone stamp tool shortcut S, it's right here. We're going to open up the window and get the clone source panel here. And here it is, right? So if I use my space bar to move this over, give us a little breathing room from that panel and I hold option here, I'm going to, I want, that's the brush size. So basically what's happening is it's going to take a clone of this brush size 
and then the, I'm going to hold Option, and that's the target. And then I click hold my main primary button on the mouse. I want to deliver it to that point. But what you can see is, is that the angle is still the same as, as the previous eyelid, and I need it to turn. And one of the cool things is I can come up here and do that. So I'm going to guess that to be about 30, right? And then we're going to come back and click hold here and just show you how it does it, and then that's going to deliver it onto that spot. So for me, that works pretty good. Let's try it again. I'm going to come off of this little black area. There. There it is. Zoom out. I got rid of the what was like kind of a poorly placed catch light, right? And I think that looks a lot better. Now, the interesting thing is I still don't like this eye because there's like it lacks a lot of that reflectivity that this one has. So ideally, what I might do is switch. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to duplicate the, the her right eye. I want to do the left. So let's figure that and I'll show you a different technique here. We're going to go up to liquify. And this has some really cool features. One of them is, is that I can select the face. And when I mouse over it, there's where the eyes are. You can move these around, right? And then it shows you the outline of the face. It does a pretty good job, um, the algorithm of, of detecting this face and outlining it. And what's really neat about this is, uh, again, for portrait photography, we could do things. I'll show you kind of an extreme version of this. For instance, like if I want to do her jawline, you know, I can adjust her face, right? Or we can do the chin, right? So this is pretty neat because you can do some seriously uh, wonderful augmentations. Now this eye looks bigger than this eye. So what I want to do is kind of like shrink it down and I'll go the other direction to exaggerate it. See, there's larger or smaller. So I can shrink this down. And I think that looks pretty good, right? But it still has that funny little dip on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to like what is like the finger smudge tool. And again, I have a up and down bracket brush size. So I'm going to make this real small. I just want to capture, oddly enough, that little teeny dip. There we go. I just want to, that's it, right? But it makes a big difference because it got rid of its nice fluid eyelid there. And we hit okay, and there you saw it happen in real time, and this is permanently on that layer now. Now what I would do is take the lasso tool, shortcut L, right? And I'm gonna select out this little, uh, this area. Let go, that's the marching ant trail, which is a selection, right? And then I could Command C, copy it, Command Shift, v paste in place v is then the shortcut for move if i hold shift it'll keep it in alignment which is nice and convenient and then what we're going to do is is we're going to transform this uh we're going to transform it flip it horizontal right now i'm pretty close right and a great way to align this would be to take the opacity on my new eyeball layer you can see it right here and i can put it at like 50 percent and i can line up those pupils and irises so i think that looks pretty good I go back to 100%, and now I'm gonna take E, shortcut eraser, it's over here on the left, you can see that, make my bracket larger. I'm at 51%, that's up here at the top. And what I can do is, is just erase this edge, right? And this is where your like artistic seal comes in as a Photoshop and a uh, Photoshop artist and, and an artist in general, and I'm seeing if I can get away with this. There would be a, other ways of doing this content aware. I'm gonna do this small because I wanna just get this little edge there. All right, making my brush size smaller, going back larger, coming out here. And I'm just painting out this edge so I can get it to blend, you know, as best as possible. And man, I think that looks pretty darn good. V, I may go down, nah, Command C, I'm gonna just leave it. There we go. Now. Although it matches the, you know, the previous kind of eye there, the problem is, is that uh, the light source is coming from the upper right hand corner and this is still fairly dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this eye a little bit and I'm going to actually use the adjustment layer here. So if I go to brightness contrast, it adds the adjustment layer on top. Filters go on the bottom, adjustment layers go on the top. The thing is, and here's the property window for it. The thing is, is this applies to the whole layer, right? So what I can do is click this and make a clipping mask that goes by this little elbow with the arrow that says it's just going to the eye layer. And then what I'm going to do is increase the, the brightness there. I think that looks pretty good. There we go. So again, that's more to the lighting of our project, right? More thematically consistent. Now here's something else I would do at this point. We have three layers that make up this whole image. It's by holding shift, I can select them all. And then if I go here, 
what I can do is this, I can make a new group from layers, okay? And ideally, if we're really good, we would label these things, but let's keep moving forward for speed. So now I have this group, and then what I'll do is I'll duplicate the group, okay? And what, why I'm doing this is because this one is a, it, all the little elements are inside there. I can turn the visibility off and close it. And this guy, I can just merge that. And what I now have is all three of those layers in one new final layer, right? But I'm only one step back. If I goof up, I can just go one step back and, and do everything. Then what I'll do with this is I will convert this to a smart object. This means the filter I apply will not be permanent, right? It won't just apply it and then move on. What it does is it applies it, but it keeps it as part of that layer. And that means this is not destructive editing, right? And I always use Camera Raw as a full color correction for the entire project, right? Uh, the old adjustments, these are great, and that was original Photoshop kind of stuff. But now that we have Camera Raw in here, this is what we professionally use to, to color correct any photograph, to be honest. I mean, the other one would be to go straight to like Lightroom for photography, but I'm gonna use this for here. First thing is mid journeys tends to be a bit muted. It's black isn't super rich. So I like to up the blacks here. I could also do that via the contrast, but I'm gonna do this here. The problem I have is this is just turning her face a little dark. The whole photo doesn't have as much contrast. Now I could go here, uh, you know, or this way like this. I don't like any of that with the contrast. What I want to do is specifically highlight her skin. And I can do that by creating a mask up here. One is, is the subject. I'm not even going to do that because it gets confused by the feathers and the armor and stuff that she has. I'm going to use the paintbrush, right? Again, right bracket, left bracket is the size diameter of the brush. And I'm just going to actually paint right on here and her skin, I don't really care too much. I kind of went around the eyes because sometimes I want the uh, blue to kind of stay where it's at. We're gonna do the shoulder in here. Again, you know, sometimes we would pin tool this out exactly. This is one of those times where you really don't have to do that. This works pretty well. And again, I can always augment this. It's not permanent, right? So I can adjust the exposure here and we're gonna brighten her up. We're gonna bring her a little to life here. And I'm gonna go down that arm and want that show up. Well, this not to be so lost in the, the side, right? I kind of, a little more of the voice. And then I know there's shadow, because again, the sun, like our spotlight, right? Whatever is coming from here. But I, I, I don't mind this. This is fantasy art, so we can kind of play with this. And sometimes doing things like this actually adds a little bit more dynamic range to that. I think that looks pretty good. I like everything we're doing. I think maybe here I might highlight her kind of little, like this flower, like these are like power button so I'm gonna hit that one and then we'll do the crown see that there you go I like where that's at right so I can go back to my uh, major uh, camera raw basic editor sliders and here we go now here's a couple things too texture this is great for portraiture a lot of people want to look like they have smoother skin think snapchat filter right um, we can go that way so this would be like more painterly you know what I mean or if I go this way it becomes almost more uh, graphic novel Right. So again, we can play with these different sliders in different ways. The texture too, like this is really uh, boosting it for this kind of fantasy stuff. We can do that. Sometimes what I'll do is, is I'll smooth this here. And then oddly enough, I'll come back to the sharpen and sharpen it there. Because what we don't want it to do is be out of focus, but we do want to soften it, but still be crisp. Right. And so when we're dealing with Photoshop, a lot of what we're doing is this, is this battle right? Of like this way, that way, you know, this way, that way. So anyway, I think this looks pretty good. And I hit OK and watch what happens. We'll see it change in real time here when Camera Raw do, um, does its algorithm. There it is. Command zeros fit the screen. And you can see that this filter then is applied to the bottom. When I save this project, okay, as a Photoshop project, doc and then i open it back up this will always be here and these slider points will be remembered okay so again say uh six months from now whatever year i open this back up right here they are they will retain where these are i could say you know what i think i did a little too much uh blowout on her face right i'm losing texture so i'm gonna i'm gonna do the highlights and I'm gonna pull the highlights back because I increased the exposure, but I wanna retain detail. I don't want it to look blown out. And I could also go like the other way. Like there it is blown out. You can see that, that's, that's terrible. So again, I can make these adjustments as needed, right?
And when I save this again, then it'll, re it'll retain that new parameters. So this is what's great about doing Photoshop in this work. And this is kind of where it becomes more, you know, of your artist uh, photography skills being used here. So there you go. Then what we would do is we would save this as, right? And I would no longer save this as a TIFF. I would go to Photoshop. The reason is, is there's zero compression. So I don't want to keep resaving this as like a JPEG or something, because every time I resave it, it's recompressing it. And we don't want to do that. We want to save it as a master Photoshop doc. Also, there's layers issues. Some things will get rid of layers. We want to save this as a master Photoshop doc. Here it is, right? And that's cool. And then with those printing companies I was showing you in the previous tutorial, a lot of times they can't use Photoshop's. Some can do TIFFs, most all of them do JPEG, right? And so here we go. And I'm gonna use the old school, save for a web version of this. It's gonna take a second to load up the window because remember this is a 30, what was it? Uh, 300 DPI, you know, thir uh, 30 inch document. So here it is, right? And we would obviously, because uh, this is a, like a photo, a painting, right? We're gonna save it as a JPEG and we would always wanna save it maximum on 100 percent quality right because these are only you would only downsize those for like web or mobile um, so we're going to save that on the desktop and there we go now I have a JPEG right and so this is pretty great because now I put all these in a folder label it appropriately here's the original right that's from discord from mid journey then we have the tiff I made from gigapixel topaz gigapixel then the photoshop master that I have and the outputted one that I would send to the uh, printer to have printed. There, hope that helps you guys out. Thank you for your time, I appreciate it. If you want to follow me on Facebook or Instagram, it's Matt Schultz Artist, or you can go to my website, mattschultz.com. Have a good day, bye.